Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be trying to firmware update this awesome Lenovo SR650 again because last time it failed actually um, a couple of hours after I was done filming it, it came down what was uh, going on was that Lenovo X Clarity Administrator would start up fine and, and work for like three minutes or something like that and then it would start taking all the resources of the virtual machine um, CPU load of a 100% and then I couldn't do anything and it wasn't responsive or anything um, I let it run and about two hours after I was done filming it calmed down so now everything is back to normal I guess those seven updates that I did on the system it needed to do a bit of cleaning after that but it um, but I really wasn't happy about that. So let's go to the computer and see if we can update this. Okay, we are at the computer in the living room, nice and quiet in here, and we're gonna be messing around with Lenovo X Clarity Administrator. But I just found something really interesting that I wanted to show you now that you're here. <laughs> um, I was gonna tell you that, well, if you buy IBM Lenovo servers, you can get the updates for them and free of cost and you don't need to have servers or support on your system to get the firmware and drivers and stuff uh, here are the drivers for the for the good old uh, ibm x3650 model 3 here is for the model 4 then it changed to lenovo and here is for the model 5 and the newest one is r650 is also not a problem i showed you that in the last video then I was going to tell you that Hewlett Packard was different, but they're not. They have changed it. So here is the firmware for the DL380 Generation 6. And I have tested this. I can download this without being logged in. And that is awesome. I'm not logged in, am I? No, I'm not logged in. Um, so we can download uh, this. Is this the... Uh, that's the latest firmware. We can just click that and download. And it just downloads. Awesome. So that's fine. This is the G7. I think I have it in this next fan. G7. Same thing. Then we have the G8. Next fan. And I can download all the drivers for the G8. There is firmware, drivers, BIOS application, utilities, operating system. I have no idea what that is. Okay. <laughs> and other software. And um, I don't need to log in and I don't need to have service or anything on my, uh, on my Hewlett Packard either. So that is marvelous. And of course, we go further and we want the G9 as well. And here is the G9. So I can I can do the same thing with Hewlett Packard servers now. And that hasn't been the case for very long. I don't know how long they have been open about this, but that's the new thing. So I thought that was interesting. And maybe, well, if you were, have a Hewlett Packard server or two, there is new firmware for your Hewlett Packard stuff as well. Back to what this video is going to be about. Let's uh, let's see where we were at last time. Last time we were messing around in here, updating the, the Lenovo X Clarity Administrator. And I have just checked it today. This is today for me. And um, there was nothing new since last time we were in here. And I have downloaded the repository for my SR650, which is a version one. There is now a version two out there. But I already spent quite enough on IT, so uh, I'm waiting a little bit on that. Cough up the cash for a new server. But I did download that repository, and the repository is a package of firmware. And it's not just for that server, it's for all the servers in the Think System series um, version 1. They have made a new one for the V2s. If we expand this a little bit, we can see that up here it says eh v2 and the one that i have applied down here it doesn't say anything more than just uh, think sensor servers so very important make sure the, to pick the right one 
if you pick the wrong one, it's not going to show up uh, with your server. So what we need to do, we need to go check that package and um, see that it's there. And it's, um, I found it here under this tab. And here are the different packages. Right now I have this package assigned to my SR650 and I have this package assigned to my X3650 model 5. So those two are in use. Then I have four other packages. This one and this one seems to be new stuff. And then these two are some previous some that uh, is, uh, it might actually be what's on the server. I, um, I made my own. You can kind of see that these are user defined and uh, these are prefixed. So I'm reserved. I have no idea why this is reserved. Or... Yeah, I don't think I want to be messing with this user defined and stuff. It doesn't make much sense for me to take one of their images and just rename it to my own. I might as well just use the default one. But this is where the different packages show up. So right now I have that package that will work for the SR650. And this package will work for the M5. I could go download the one for the M5, but let's wait with that. So I have downloaded the package with all the firmware. Now I need to tell the server that it has to use that package of firmware. Uh, last time when I couldn't get this up and running, I, uh, I manually updated some firmware and we will see this just, just now uh, when we go over here to um, apply and activate, we can see that my server is not compliant and it has been assigned this policy or this package. So if we click down there, we can see the other packages, there is not assigned and then there's the latest and the greatest. And then there's this default one, the one that we already have, and then an older one. And the older one, I think, is about the same as this one. So when we hop, when we jump to the new stuff, I should be able to delete this one, and that will clear up some space. Not that it's particularly needed, but we can also see what is not compliant. And not compliant means that um, this package includes some drivers and if the drivers change i'm told that then the server is not compliant with what it should be so if we click down here we can see that uh, our primary xcc is not compliant it's on a later version than the one that should be on there so that's why that's not compliant that makes sense because I updated that. The uh, same thing with the UEFI buyers here. It's, um, it has this installed and it should have had this installed because that's what's in the driver or firmware package. And I also updated the RAID controller down here. So it's complaining about that. It has this one installed and the packet says that it should have this one installed. So, ooh, we are in trouble there. <laughs> But let's tell it to be compliant with the new package. And I think we will pick, we'll pick this package, which is the default one, that one. And then it will be looking at that one and tell me that we're still not compliant. So let's see. But <laughs> funny enough, now it's everything else that isn't compliant. You can see that now the XCC is okay because that was the one with firmware updated. The UEFI bias is also okay because we put the latest and the greatest under and the rate controller is now okay. So it's, it's kind of opposite. It's all the stuff that wasn't compliant before. And <laughs> yeah, so let's do this. Um, we'll just minimize that. So now we have, we've kind of told it that it should look at another driver package and now we can tell it to update according to that driver package we do that by marking this one and perform update so there if you're in a big environment there is different ways of, of doing this you might not want it to do it right away you can you can schedule it at the moment we're just going to do it immediately 
Um, we only have that one server that will be updated, um, but this could be 20 servers, doesn't matter. And this is where the system is smart. If this was VMware, it can actually move virtual machines from one server to another server if, if that part is installed and update one server and then move the virtual machines and then update the next server. And most of the systems can do that nowadays. We don't have that to test with. So we'll just perform the update here and we should get a nice progress bar. There, I have to press F5. So now it's uh, 2%. This is gonna take a while, but we can kind of see what it's doing if we expand it here. So right now it's, it's in progress here. It has queued all of these. And I'll be back if something interesting happens. Okay, we can actually already see it, it has moved. It's 42% now and it has skipped the XCC, the, the management part, and it has skipped the Wi-Fi bias as well because those were updated. So that's cool. So while I've been preparing for the next video, it has completed here, but it still says that it's not compliant, but status was completed. Uh, so let's see, it has done some stuff. Uh, it says that it's not compliant, but all of this stuff, well, the, the backup uh, XCC has not been updated. That's okay. I kind of like to have the primary XCC and the backup XCC on different version. If this new version turns out to be really bad and does something really unexpected, it's nice to have an older version to, to as a backup so that it doesn't make the exact same error on the, uh, on the backup. Uh, so, so that part is okay with me. Then it did not update the LOM adapter, the network card, and hard drive firmware. Mm, I don't know if it should do that, or also not these. I think I'm gonna try and, and ask it to run it again. And we're gonna perform update once again. Uh, let's try this false update this time and then perform update. Oh, would you look at that. It has completed and it's now compliant. That is awesome. It has updated that one. That's the one that is now okay. Those two it hasn't done. Apparently, maybe they aren't in use. Now our firmware updated, it's to a state where it is happy with me. Then we could just well, the M5 down here, I'm not gonna update it, but we could just get the package so you can see how that, well, we saw it last time, but under the update manager here, update management server, under the update management server here, we click that one. And that's a uh, system X server. So we need to find that. Um, that's this package here, it's, yeah, that package is the one we need for the X5. So I'm gonna select that one and we're gonna download select it there. And it's gonna be downloading that. And when that is downloaded, I can apply it. So now that we have completed the update, we can go in here and we can see that um, the user defined one here that one is not in use anymore. That one is also not in use. And that one is also not in use. So I'm gonna delete some of those old ones. This one, let's start with that one. It's not assigned to anything. So delete any policy and firmware, and we can just delete policy. So we're gonna delete that. We're gonna pick that one, and it's gonna delete both the policy and the the firmware packages for that policy. And that will free up a little bit of space on my hot wire. Zero of one policy was deleted successfully. The one of one policy failed to delete. I, I think it's because uh, that policy is in use. This one is the Think System Server Default. Uh, that's probably the package that was together with the other one. So if I delete this one, I think we'll actually delete both the 
the policy and the, the firmware packages. So let's try that one. I was gonna delete that anyway. Zero of one? No. Okay, so, but it's gone. So yeah, we uh, cleaned up a little bit. I'm not sure if the packages are gone, but I think so. Very happy with the results of that. Finally, I firmware updated this to the latest and the greatest. The backup XCC, it's okay that it's further behind, as I said. I like it to be another different version so that if the current version fails, there's an older one on there that is different so that I don't run into the same error once again. Now I'm ready to move on to other tasks. I need to register this server with the vCenter. Uh, so that the server will go into vCenter and I need to connect it to the to the shared storage uh, up here the unnamed NAS and um, then I can start moving virtual machines over including the the virtual router that I have running on uh, the M4 down here uh, PFSense in a virtual instance I have been asked if I'm gonna do a video on installing PFSense I, I think I have done that and it's not magic so i think it's gonna be more interesting to move it over see how that is done it would be so awesome if you would give this video a little like and also follow me over on twitter or facebook where i usually post um well facebook is mostly the new videos that that is reminds you over there that there's a new video and twitter is more like what i randomly do here and there if something interesting happens weird joke something yeah also there is patreon if you want to support what i do make sure that i can afford all these expensive hardware things that i well this one was some um, patreon money so um yeah so yeah patreon and it's uh, very cheap and you get an extra sunday update video i call those what's up so i go around and I film what's been going on in the weekend and what uh, what you can expect of videos this coming week and there is extra random stuff that never makes it into any videos so a little extra behind the scenes often so yeah thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye